Skin grafting is a common method in the treatment of burns. Though effective in closing the wounds, it leaves nasty scars. Nowadays, much of the burn research is aimed at preventing these scars. Tissue engineering plays an important role in this research. Professor Esther Middelkoop, burn researcher, explains how. Tissue engineering, that means a combination of materials, biomaterials that can be degraded and cells to replace any organ of the human body. Uh, and for skin that means that we have a combination of biomaterials that can be synthetic or biological um, and a combination with dermal cells uh, and epidermal cells. To better understand the significance of tissue engineering for burn patients, we take a closer look at the skin. It roughly consists of two layers, the epidermis and below that the dermis. Severe burns damage both layers or even totally destroy them. Skin grafting is then the normal procedure to treat these wounds. At present, the standard treatment of burns uses a piece of the patient's own skin that is being taken with an electric dermatome, a sort of knife, uh, on, in a very thin layer. But in doing that, we actually lose the dermal uh, function of the skin, and that is why it actually becomes a scar. To improve the quality of the scar, adding a dermis is essential. Nowadays, biodegradable scaffolds are often used as a dermis substitute. They consist of proteins often collected from animal skin. After adding a special fluid, the artificial dermis is placed on the burn. On top of that, the graft is placed. It restores the elastic properties of the skin and it's a scaffold for the skin cells to grow into. At present, uh, we have actually proof that using a dermal substitute in scar treatment or in wound treatment actually will lead to a better quality of the scar. So we can demonstrate that the pliability and the surface roughness of the scar is better with a dermal substitute than without. But in order to improve the quality of the wound healing even more, because these materials still leave a scar, we can use more components of the patient's own skin in uh, the wound healing process. And for that we need actually to culture both the epidermal cells as well as the dermal cells from the patient. In order to make such a fully tissue engineered skin construct we need to have a little bit of time. So at the first instance a small piece of the patient's own skin is harvested from any place where this is possible and that is taken to a specialized laboratory and there we can separate the dermal and the epidermal cells and culture them independently and then later on in the process we bring back both components of the skin so to make a new epidermis and a new dermis and that can then be transplanted on the patient. Later in the process, both cultured skin components are brought back together. Again, an artificial, biodegradable dermal substitute made of native collagen is used as a carrier. It is cut to the size of the petri dish. Then the fluid containing the dermal cells is dripped upon the scaffold as evenly as possible. The petri dish is then put into the incubator for 24 hours. The process is then repeated with the cultured epidermal cells. The whole process, from harvesting until the actual operation, takes 10 to 12 days. In this time frame, a small biopsy of a couple of square centimeters can be processed to a skin substitute with autologous cells of about 100 square centimeters. So the future developments right now are that we will start uh, using these cell-seeded constructs in clinical trials to see if we can actually improve the scar quality by using these cells. And then the further developments will be in the laboratory to try and make new hair follicles and sweat glands for example. And another development will be that we can start using cartilage to repair defects on noses and ears.